Okay, shh, don't tell anybody, but it's February and it's sunny. Yeah, look at it. Amazing. Today we're going to talk about something that's very, very close to my heart. Did oh, I say bottom. heart? It's uh, air hawk seats and um, we'll explain the reasons why we use them and how you fit them because it's dead simple. Because he's not a manly biker like <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, air hawk seats. Um, you've probably all seen these before, you, some of you may not have. Um, I came across them about three or four years ago after riding down to Garmisch, uh, Parton Kirch, and see the BMW show. And um, we had to ride back up, I had to do 1300 miles in two days. Um, and I wasn't actually looking forward to it because even though I was on a GSA, it's got a nice comfy seat. It has got a comfy seat. It has got a comfy seat. Um, I was thought... just thinking about that crying emoji face when you said you had to travel all those miles. <laughs> <laughs> and it rained the whole time. Yeah. But anyway, that's the good part of it. But um, we were looking at these, uh, these um, air hawk seats and humming and ahhing whether to do it or not. And somebody said to me, in the uh, stall where the stall where they were selling them was, uh, he said, if it was a case of divorcing his wife or buying an air hawk seat, the wife was out the door. So I bought an air hawk seat and I haven't looked back since. And the reason for that is quite simple. They are amazing. Now, on a tour last year mm -hmm. uh, to Norway, somebody had a gel seat and um, he was laughing at this because he thought it was a bit big and a bit cumbersome and perhaps a bit weird. So I swapped with his gel seat and he had my air hawk seat for the day and at the end of it he was begging me to sell it to sell it to him. The gel so seat was not nice but it's just not comfortable. They're not cheap though are they? Uh, no they're about 135 quid at the moment, 135 pounds on eBay. Other sites are available obviously. Um, and I think that's a pretty standard price for them. And they come in different sizes. This is a cruiser seat. And this is massive like, bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a, a, like a pillion seat. Um, they've got different names, but basically, I measured the, si the size of the, um, <laughs> the size of the seat and went for one which would fit. So this is mine that goes on the front, and this one I've just bought for Cornish Stig because she's coming away with me uh, on a bike trip later this year. So what are they made of then? They're really simple. The, the, we take this one out, it'd be easier to get back in, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, what what are all these strange looking egg things? <laughs> you weird. Oh, it's one of those you put water in it, put it in a freezer, and then you can pop out those ice cubes, can't you? Yeah, you have got a problem, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Look at it, ice cubes. So basically all it is is a bladder that's got these bobbly bits on, and it I suppose it's like a hospital mattress really. Um you know that you put people on who have to stay in bed for a long time so they don't get um, bed sores mm -hmm. and basically you don't fill it up so it's blown up as hard as it can be you have a little bit of air in there really minimal amount um, and it's just so that when you're moving that your, your your bum if you want just moves around on it and it just mm. doesn't feel as hard so all the pressure points you would normally get on your on your bottom uh, and on the you know where your your hip joint is sat on the seat it sort of alleviates that. And I see on the um, little ice cube square things, there's little holes where it meets. So no air, it's, it's not air in one thing, it actually moves around, doesn't it? Because even though we're having a laugh and a joke, it's quite a serious thing, isn't it? If you're uncomfortable, if you're cold, or if there's something wrong with you on a ride, that's all you think about. You don't think about your ride, do you? You think about how uncomfortable you are. Yeah. comfortable you are. So if you're able to just move around and that air then follows you around as you're moving your bum, it's going to make it more comfortable, isn't it? You should be a scientist. Right. Professor <laughs> of Rider Cam TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the way it, um, it inflates is just this little valve here. Hmm. You're um, blowing that, do you? You're blowing that. And what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to inflate the thing fully so you can see how much air goes in it normally. Okay. This is a replication of the ice cubes forming. Okay, so that's what it looks like when it's fully inflated. You can't ride your bike like that because it's, it's just not comfortable. Well, that, that, that would be, I guess, the same as having a hard seat, wouldn't it? 
you're just replicating it and higher so, up. See how, see how much higher it would be. You're about, what, four centimetres, five centimetres yeah. above the seat. So once you've got it inflated, you let it all out. And basically it's a, it's a bit of a hit and miss thing hmm. until you feel comfortable in it. But I would say... So do you want to, do, do you want to put it on the seat? Because you'll be able to squish it out a little bit more and we'll get it on that camera as well. So you've just blown it out. So that's about how much air you'd have in it normally. And it, it looks it looks really weird, doesn't it? Because it it just looks like there's nothing in there. But that's the idea, isn't it? To yep. have just a tiny little bit of air in there that's able to go from compartment to compartment when you move. Yep. As a because bear in mind your legs are going to be the other side. Uh -huh. So my hands can't replicate where your bum's going to be. Because yep. your bum's, get, you, you know, you're going to fill the whole of that seat up, aren't you? Yeah. What are you trying to say? You've got a massive ass. All right. Fair <laughs> dues. Fair <laughs> dues. <laughs> okay. There are two different types. Before we go any further, this is uh, polyurethane. There is one in neoprene, um, and the, apparently the neoprene is, lasts longer and all the rest of it. But you know, I've actually had mine now for four years, and it shows no sign of wear. And what I did have to replace was the actual cover that goes around yeah. it. So, you know, that's the cheaper option, the, near, the polyurethane one, I think. But, you know, if you can afford one and you want one, buy it. And that just fits into this handy little case, which also has got air holes here as well, hasn't it? All the way around, so that the air, you know, because it's going to be a hot place, isn't it? If you think about hot country, yeah. but also you, you haven't got any air going between your bottom and the seat. So this, in fact, is giving a little bit more um, air going in between the compartments in through the mesh as well. So it's yep. going to keep everything cool, isn't it? Rather than you getting heat sores and stuff, because it does happen. It sounds really strange, but it does happen. So that just fits in there. It is, yeah, yeah. And then zips up. Now the other thing about this is the material on the top is really quite hard wearing. And mm -hmm. Mine was four years old before it started to get a bit threadbare. Um, and even if you're riding in the rain, obviously it gets damp, but it dries out really quickly. It's not Gore-Tex or anything like that, it's just yeah. it, because of the wind that runs through it, um, it dries really quickly, so you don't feel like you've got a damp backside or anything like that. It's just, it's, it's very pleasant, almost. Now I guess the viewers out there will be thinking, well, that's all well and good having this bag. How does it fit to the bike? That's really easy. Because on the bottom, you get these little hooky things, just them on here as well, we? yep. So you've got these strange hooks. Little hook things. Yeah. Okay, and basically you just put it around the, the underneath of the seat. Now I crisscross these because it keeps it more stable. Um, you don't have to, you can just put it a loop. And there's no right way. or wrong way to put them on. No, of course there isn't. It's just different. Yeah. So and the you know they're loops. They're quite strange, aren't they? Because they're not actually fully fixed all the time, are they? No because they've got a lot, like a little hook on there. So you can get them off and on quite quickly. And off often, and onable. Yeah, off and onable. <laughs> and obviously that's really good for you as a rider if you want to take it in. If, if you are parked in a place where you think somebody's going to nick it, you can take it off quite quick. But on the downside is if you do leave it there, it's quite easy for other people to take it off as well, isn't it? But yeah. you know, you can't have it every way. I mean, that is an addition to your bike. How else are you going to keep it on there? Yeah. I mean, if you were going to, if you're worried about security, you might just take the inside bladder out, and you know. Mm. Oh, and talking about taking the inside out, just a tip for people that go on ferries quite a lot: the ferries will put a pad on here, and they'll strap it down so tightly to hold the bike onto the onto the boat. When I had mine, I don't know about you, but I always used to either take that out, the inside out, put it into the pannier, or let all the air out because you don't want that pressure being pushed on it all the time, do you, on a ferry trip, and then come back and find that it's broken, because then you've got just a, an extra thing that's taking up space and not doing anything. Yeah, but on the, I mean, if you forget that, on the, on the, on the positive side of, of it is, there's so little air in these anyway, um, and if they do put a strap across it, it's only ever gonna yeah. be compressed. Oh, push it out, I guess. Yeah, yeah. so you, you don't have to yeah. worry about it. But you know, I'll be honest, I leave mine on. Do you? Yeah, because I'm well, lazy. I'm, I'm really protective because the seat comes back, but they put those pads down, and when you get on, get back to your bike, take the pads off, there's this massive great dent on the seat where yeah. it's been. 
So I guess, yeah, what you're saying is it's pushing the air all out, isn't it? Yeah, because you don't have a lot of air in it anyway. Yeah. I personally would take it off because it's over 100 quid's worth of stuff. Yeah. Not get it damaged. Right, so we've got to take the seat off, I guess. Okay. Mark? Just wanted to show you the inside of this one first. This is the, the cruiser seat, and you can see there's very little air in there. Obviously, we've been pushing around and moving the air about, but yeah. so little air in there. Right, so you want the seat then, do you? I need the seat. Because... Right, so we don't need to fit that one, do we? So, one un seat. Un seat? <laughs> yeah, one seat. It's really simple. Just pass that over the top. Pass that one over the top. He says. He says. In true Blue Peter fashion, pull it back. And there you are. And that's so, it fitted. Underneath, crisscross, forgive the dirty seat. <laughs> underneath. But when you're doing it, I guess you need to make sure that you're away from where it actually fits on the bike yep. so it doesn't damage damage it and then literally it's as easy as putting the seat back and that is it there you go air hawk seat fitted air hawks do they get the seat rider cam tv seal of approval rider rider cam tv recommended yes <laughs> so good seats brilliant yeah brilliant and this one is for the rear seat does exactly the same just sits there yeah it just looks a little bit smaller, doesn't it? Yeah. I like the look of that one better because it covers the seat. Yeah. I'm a little bit anal for things looking nice. And that kind of looks like something that I forgot about, that, oh, I'll, I'll add that on. Whereas that looks right, but I don't know, a bit better. A pillion is only going to be sat in that, in that area there, so that's all you need. No, I, oh, they're not, are they? Watch our pillion video. <laughs> <laughs> pillion stick. I actually measured this, this one against the rear seat of a GS Adventure and it's just too big. It really is too is big. Is it? Yeah. So you need to measure it and then go on the site for Airhawk and make sure you get the right one for your bike. Yep. And then you'll be riding around with a comfy tush. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so, Done. if you've liked the video and you're going to get a right uh, Airhawk, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It'll be there somewhere. Leave a comment in the description below do you wear, do you ride with one of these have you got something else do you find something better and we'll hopefully see you in the next one can i just say it's cold it's a wuss <laughs> <laughs>